morning. It's Thursday, and today we're going to talk about the second article of the Apostles' Creed. The first article is the one we've been talking about, I Believe in God the Father. This article begins, and in Jesus Christ, etc. The third article begins, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So, um, those are the, how the three articles are laid out in this Trinitarian Creed. So, we begin the longest article of the Creed today, and it's the one that deals with, with Jesus. It deals with uh, his titles and some things about his earthly life. And we'll go through and talk about them as days go by. Uh, so this part of the creed says, and in Jesus Christ, uh, his only son, our Lord. So Jesus is his name. Um, it, it's a common Hebrew name. It's actually Yeshua or Joshua. And um when you take it through Greek, it becomes Jesus, and so we get Jesus uh, out of that. Um, but that's his name, Jesus of Nazareth, he's called in the New Testament. Christ is not his last name. It is a, uh, it's a title, Christos in Greek, and it's the same word. It's a translation of the word Mashiach or Messiah from Hebrew. They all mean anointed one. Somewhere in Isaiah, maybe chapter 45, uh, Cyrus the Mede, the king of the Medes, is referred to as the Lord's Messiah because he conquers the Babylonians and frees the people from exile and they're allowed to eventually come home. And so he is used by God and he's the anointed one for that purpose. And other kings are anointed for various things. So Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. So it's proper to say he's Christ Jesus. It's proper to say he's Jesus the Christ, as we occasionally do in worship. Um, so Christ is, is a title. It's not his last name. That's something that some people confuse. So we believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, that makes us Christians. And, and saying this creed and making that declaration is is the thing that makes you a Christian. If you, as a professor of mine said once, kind of jokingly, you might some people might come to church and say the creed once too often. You don't want to say the creed if you don't believe it. You don't want to say the creed lightly. It's an important thing. It's not just something that we rattle off, but it it's 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 the core of Christian faith. It's what, what we believe. Um, and we can get more into that as we go. Um, so we believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, um, which is immediately gets us into that Trinitarian thinking again. If God is Father, then Jesus is the Son. And there's this self-distinction that Jesus makes between Father and Son. He he refers to God as Father, and he refers to himself as the Son. And so um, we see that Father and Son are, again, those properties of the Trinity that are almost beyond um, real definition. We understand that God is uh, exists in three persons, but is one God. And whatever that actually means is, is a mystery. But that's what we say in the Creed. So Jesus is God's only son, and he is our Lord. And that word is, is all over the place in the Bible. In the Greek, it's kurios, and it means simply Lord or master. Uh, occasionally in the New Testament, it's even used to mean sir. Um, so if you are the kurios of an estate, you're the master, the, the one in charge. Uh, if you are the Roman emperor, you are kurios. And so some of these titles that are given to Jesus are given to him specifically because the Roman emperors use them. So the Romans are walking around saying, well, Caesar is Lord, and Caesar is Savior, and Caesar is the Master. And Christians are saying, no, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Master. He's the one we follow. 
And that doesn't sit well with Rome at all. So you see, even something as benign as the Apostles' Creed gets political pretty fast. So watch out. We'll talk some more about the rest of this article of the Creed in the coming days, but um, ponder today what it means for Jesus to be your Lord.